Hello. Uh, by request, I've decided to make a tutorial on how to use instant static mesh components from C, uh, how to add instances to them and move them and, and so on. Um, so I made a new project that's empty here um, and just have the default. Um, so let me make a new C++ class, make it an actor. that code. Forgot to turn hot reload off. Which was a mistake, clearly. Okay. Turn some of these off, so I hate autosave. I hate hot reload. Okay. So let's take a look. So here's our new actor. Uh, since we're not going to derive any subclasses from this, we can mark this as final. Let's see, I'm going to move tick up to here. Actually, I think, let me re. Yeah, like that. The reason I did that is because uh, you see it renamed it Delta Seconds. For some reason, they uh, their template C++ has the wrong name for that. Uh, you'll see as we come in here. So, all right, all right. So we will need to tick if you want to move these per frame. Um, so let's set up tick. All right, we're going to need to do some stuff and begin play and on tick. And you see it's delta time instead of delta seconds. All right. All right. So now we're going to need a component, right? So I'm going to make a region for that. I just like to do this to keep things uh, easy to unfold later. So that's our instance static mesh component. So we need to create it now. All right. And let's go ahead and set it as our root component. Now, I don't know if you want this component to be mobile or not. If you don't, um, you can set the mobility here, right? You can still move the instances if the component is not mobile, right? Because what we're talking about is the root location of the component. Um, so like if you had 100 instances, let's say, that were spread out all over the place and you wanted to move them as a whole, um, you could move the instance static mesh component. Uh, but we're not going to do that. Um, and let's see. I'm just going to go ahead and turn off the collision. Um, like that. Okay, so that's all I've got so far. Um, let's go ahead and compile and take a look um, at our blueprint. We'll make a blueprint from it. Go ahead and make a blueprint class and here's our instance actor that I just made. So okay. Now you can see we have an instant static mesh component, right? No static mesh um, yet. Let's see. Collision um, has no collision set, right? No overlap events. We can cast shadows, so on. So this is good. Um, I have no meshes, so maybe we look at engine content and select something like a comb. Uh, let's make a material real quick. Uh, um, and the reason. 
reason I want to do this is I don't want to modify that original material. Let's just make it yellow, I guess, <laughs> for fun. Okay, and if you come down here, you need to have use with instant static mesh is set, right? I'm going to turn that off. White map directionality is there. Okay. So instance material. Let's stick. Let's go ahead and turn off the engine content. There we go. Instance material. Okay. So we have no instances, right? As you can see here, no instances. Um, we could manually make one, as uh, was shown in that last video, right? Right now, let's make an instance. It's at zero, zero, zero. There it is, right? But let's say we want to make them programmatically. All right, well, let's turn that to auto save. Always. Okay. Well, how would we do that? Well, there's two ways we could do it. Um, one way, if you want to see it in the editor while you're fiddling, um, you could do it on construct, or we could do it on begin play. Uh, why don't we do it on construct just to try it? So, so here we go, on construction. And keep in mind, on construction will run uh, whenever the actor um, is modified, so you have to be careful what you construct here um, to check some stuff, and I'll show you. So. Here's our instant static mesh component. Um, look, we can add instances. Whoops. Add instance, add instances. Um, if you have an array of transforms and so on, um, you can clear the instances. Uh, you can update their positions and so on. So in this case, let's make like 10 in a row or something like that. Um, so let's, let's say, that instance count is zero, right? Because this means we haven't already constructed the instances. If we have constructed them, we don't want to do this a second time. So um, let's make a TRA of transforms uh, because that's what the instance static mesh component is going to ask for when we add instances, right? Um, so, or I mean, we could just you can just add one at a time too. Um, like if you do add instance, um, but each time you add an instance, it's gonna, you know, do some stuff. It's gonna mark itself dirty. So you, if you wanted, if you knew you wanted to add a bunch at once, um, maybe you would want to do add uh, transforms. But actually, this makes me think of something else. So once we've added these instances, right? If we want to move them, um, it's much easier to have like some kind of a record of where you want them to be that's in an array like this, and then just update their locations as opposed to trying to read their locations and then update them. Um, so you can, I don't know if you, let's see, can you get, yeah, you can get the instance transform. So you could get its transform and then update it or something like that. But um, my suggestion here, let's, let's just do this. Uh, I'm gonna make an array that's here. F transforms, where we're just going to keep the location of the, the their transform of them currently, right? So let's say we're going to have ten. So we'll do that. Okay. So we can say. So I'm going to put them, let's say, 100 centimeters apart, uh, which is one meter apart, um, for each index, right? Like that. Okay. So now we can do add instances, transforms, bam. Um, okay. So these transforms actually create it. Right, here we don't need this there, right? Okay. So we're going to empty our transforms. We're going to add them here. 
uh, should return indices bool. And it returns a T array of indices. So I guess we can say false. Okay, so if, the, if there's no instances, we're going to empty our transforms array. We're going to fill it, right? Then we're going to add these indices to the instance static mesh component on construct. So we should see this now. So let's run it. go. So you see we have our instances, right? Go down here. <laughs> see, it says it has zero array elements because they're being created in the constructor. You can see those there, right? Okay. Let us, I'll just stick this in the world here. See, if you look, because they're static, it's thinking that it can build light for them, uh, which is interesting, right? Because um, if they move, because I can move the instances, you'll see here. Let's go ahead and save this map. Um, okay. So we've saved the map. So we've created our instances. Um, we actually don't need begin play now that I've created them there. So on tick, we're going to move them, right? So let's see. over the transforms. Let's see, I'm trying to think of the best way to do this because I want to add like an offset now. Um, let's see. Let's move them. See, let's move up and down at one hertz. So we're gonna need a time there, right? So okay. So I'm creating an offset. Um, let's see. In fact, what I probably should do instead of doing this. instance yep transform you can't update just the location or something like that so let's find let's update just that instex let's update it with um, transforms index oh see look they got world space mark render state dirty so we could say um, false on world space and False on mark render state dirty and true on total port. Okay, and then when we're done updating those, we can mark render state dirty. So this way you can update their transforms a bunch of times before it re renders. Um, this should be more performant, I would think. Okay, so this transform here, I'm trying to. Hmm. Uh, Let's see. Hmm. I'm 
just going to move them in the X direction. Um, so I'm going to make a new transform from my old transforms location. This is kind of ugly. This is just to show that it, it can be done, okay? So how you want to how you want to figure out where they are and how you want to move them, um, you know, you can do it any way you want. I'm just going to store their transforms like this. Um, I mean, heck, we could, you know, there's a lot of different ways we could do this. So anyway, I just want to demonstrate it. So the offset's there. Um, we've got the original location. We're adding in a new offset, and then we're going to set them to that new location. This way they can go back and forth um, because they're offset from that original transform, which I don't change, right? Um, and I update all of them, and then I mark it dirty at the end. Um, so let's see what happens. Oh gosh, it didn't load default the P, did it? That's because I forgot to go into the project settings, maps and modes, and tell it to load default P. There we go. Okay, so there's my actor, and if we play, we got a crash. Let's see what happened. Okay, let me well up. Transforms index. Well, there should be should be ten, right? Oh, is it because I did it on construction? And hmm, that's that's interesting. I would have thought it would have done this, added them, and that it would have been accessible here. Um, that is pretty interesting. Let's try. Let's try doing this a different way. So, let's see, we probably don't really even need this to be there. Let's do this. Okay. So, right, so this will just recalculate it without having to store it um, since we know what it is we're trying to do here. All right. Something went wrong there, obviously. Yeah, let's see. Let me uh, look at the let's look at the instance component. Hopefully, this will teach you to uh, debug some things yourself. Look, here's our instances, right? And here's the transform. So you move it back and forth. Ah, like these are equal. So apparently, I screwed up somehow. forgot to do multiply by index. There we go. <laughs> Every single one was the same. There we go. So all those instances are moving. We can hit F8 and pop out. Let's look at the instance actor. You can see the instances moving here. You can pause them and see where they are. Um, like I was saying, 
So that's one way to do it, right? Um, so that's how, how you can create instances. Um, you could do this on begin play if you wanted as well. I just did it on construction so you could see it in the blueprint. Um, and then on tick, you can update, you know, with loops, um, their transforms. Um, and if you need to do it relative to something else, you know, if you need to recalculate it, whatever is fine. Um, one thing I would not advise doing is trying to read out them and re-update them. Um, the, their indices, the instance static mesh component objects can, can be confusing, right? Like, and since they're all basically the same object, uh, you know, the same mesh, it's kind of like, why not just update their locations? Why try to keep track of one and, and do something special with it, uh, in my opinion? Um, so one other thing I think might be interesting is if you have your instance material right here, right? Um, you can have, for instance, custom data, right? So if we wanted to change, make the color of each one different, let's say, um, or maybe, um, say so for instance custom data um, is data that we could set per instance right um, trying to think of what would be interesting to do but probably color would be the most interesting thing to do but this is just a scalar so you would actually need to set like three per instance custom data if you wanted to do uh, color so let's let's do that as data index one this is data index right so now we have three for instance custom datas uh, we can go make float three right okay and you'll see oh it's there's an error let's just set the constant default value to one and one well what is the error look invalid node used in picture hold domain shader input uh oh we need to do um, vertex interpolator okay so these run in the vertex um, in the vertex part of the shader <laughs> and so this moves it into the pixel shader so there we go right okay so what we want to do is go back to this guy and go to our instant static mesh component and we want to say that we have three custom data floats here okay if you don't do that, you're going to have some issues. All right, so we save it. Save it. Okay. And now here where we add them, let's see. Look, we got set custom data. You can do custom data or custom data value, which is just a singular one. Let's set custom data. So look, it's saying, what instance, uh, what's your array of floats, and if you want to mark the render state as dirty, right? Okay, so let's make, so we're going to need an array of floats, right? So this is our red, right? The first one would be red. Um, so let's just do something random. Okay. So we'll make it random, red, green, and blue. And we'll set that custom data here. Uh, oh, on the instance that we just added. Um, Oh wow! Well, we added. We're adding all the instances together here, right? <laughs> so, um, gonna have to iterate over them, I guess. I wonder. Can you add? You can't do the data there. That's interesting. So, um,
All right, so we can loop, loop, loop over them. Um, I think I'm gonna actually do this outside the loop first um, to create it, and then we'll set it here uh, so that I'm not creating the T array every time. So we're just setting it. Let's see. There we go. So I make the array, I initialize it uh, with zero, with three zeros, right? Then I'm setting the values to a random value, and then I'm setting the custom data in the instant static mesh component. But I'm not marking it as dirty. And then when I'm done, I'm marking it as dirty, right? So you could do this here on tick two if you wanted, but I don't want the random colors changing every tick. Um, I just want them to be random when we start. Ah, look, they're random. There we go. And I am moving them. Which is pretty cool, right? So you can use that per instance custom data to do lots of different stuff um, so that you can do it per instance, even um, you know, and, and as one draw call, like this is one draw call here, um, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully that clarifies some stuff. If you have any other questions, just let me know. Thanks.